click on this red, green, blue icon and then click on white balance and then it'll do the same thing. Okay? <laughs> it is important that uh, you're properly exposed uh, so I would put it on auto exposure. If you want to check if you're over or underexposed, this little icon up here, if you click on that it becomes sort of a heat scale. So um, if I, I'll intentionally turn the auto exposure off and then I'll drive the exposure to too high at some point you start so mm -hmm. those are saturated pixels um, you can't fight balance on saturated pixels and if you go the other way you go way too short it'll well we can't quite get it even that way it would be blue the mm -hmm. ones that are black okay so um, that's obviously too much there bring it down okay I'll go back to auto exposure all right so We'll get into more of the software. I want to go back to Kohler Illumination. And now that you have the live image there, if I close this field diaphragm down, you start to see it come into your field. Okay, and actually we're still on that heat map. Let me click that one more time. Get back. So now what we want to do is uh, with our specimen in focus, we want to uh, adjust the edges of that of the diaphragm until they're crisp and sharp. And let me, I'm going to just, I'm going to turn, let me open this up uh, for a second. I'm going to turn the auto exposure off because the autos, when I bring in all the black, it, mm -hmm. so I'm going to leave it right where it is. I'm going to click on this one more time. So now we're off of auto exposure. Now when I close this down, you won't get that crazy correction. So there's our, the, the diaphragm edges and you see when it's out of focus and then if I wind it actually if I wind there's there's two knobs one on each side in the back that focus the condenser up and down mm -hmm. you notice they kind of stopped in focus and the reason for that is is when I set it originally there's a little uh, way down under here in the back there's a little thumb screw that you wind up until it makes contact and then that sets the upper travel limit so even if you wind it down if you wind it back up close stop so unless someone goes way underneath there <laughs> and changes this you only need to just wind your condenser up until it stops okay so once that's set uh, you can center it there's a couple of uh, centering keys but we're pretty well centered there so field diaphragm pretty much you you're going to just open it up get it out of the field of view okay next thing up here is our condenser um, our condenser will have uh, an aperture diaphragm here. As you close your aperture down, you'll increase depth of focus, you'll increase contrast, but the trade-off is light intensity and resolution. Okay, So it's going to be different for each objective. If you're not sure you want to mess with it, just leave it wide open. Otherwise, you close it down just till you see it starts to have an effect on your image. And that's ideal for that particular magnification. The higher, the higher you go up in magnification, the less you have to close this down. The low mag, you see I'm closing it all the way down by 2. Mm. 40x, it might be up between 4 and 5 or something. In the 100x, you may not need to close it down nearly as much. Okay? So the thing is, you can't just set this at 1 mag and assume it's good for everyone. And again, if you don't want to mess with that, just leave it wide open. Okay? The next thing on here is a turret for uh, DIC. Okay? Um, and DIC stands for Differential Interference Contrast. That's a technique where you get a very three-dimensional uh, view of your, your specimen. This will turn out really nice in DIC. Uh, right now we're just in straight bright field. Uh, in order to do uh, DIC, you have to have polarized light. So we have a polarizer down below. This is an analyzer above. If we put these, just polarizer and analyzer in, you actually should get black because you want your polarizer and anal analyzer crossed to each other, okay? Um, so that's good. And then, um, I'm not sure, did we have DIC for the 10X or not? I can't remember. So if we, uh, if we then turn this, yeah, so this says 10 slash 20, and then if I put this in, we'll now have our DIC. Go 
I'm going to go up one mag, uh, up one objective. Let's go back to auto exposure here. All right, so with DIC, you have to, uh, your polarizer and analyzer have to be in, and then you have to uh, match the objective to what's here on the condenser, and then you have to push this prism in as well, okay? Then when you rotate this prism, you'll see it'll change the contrasting. You'll get more or less contrast. You can adjust it to what you think it is. But you definitely see a little more three-dimensionality, right, with that. If when the DI sees in, you say, well, okay, now the background has changed a little because of the polarized light. If you want to re-white balance for the DIC, I'm still on this draw rectangle. I can just draw a rectangle, let go, and say white balance. And... Uh, Okay. Also, when you're when you're done with this, if you go, click back on the arrow when you're uh, to get out of that, so you're just in in your regular arrow. So that's how that works. And again, if you change objectives, if we go to the 40x, okay, we have to see where the 40x is here, okay, and then again, um, we can just rotate this. You know, you can see what level of contrast you want there, right? Okay? When you're doing just bright field, you can leave this polarizer in on the bottom, but you do need to put this back to the BF position, and you need to pull this out, okay? Because if you just leave that in, and then you want to pull the, pull the analyzer out too. So if I'm going to bright field, I pull this out to the first click, this out to the first click, and move this to BF. So now we're in just regular bright field. Obviously not as much three-dimensionality there, right? Big difference. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay? So, um, so this is like a BF in the other option is the? Uh, it says 10 slash 20, 20, 40, 100, and that's blank. There's a couple blanks. Oh, okay. But which one is off? Oh, you need to just match. You match it to the objective. Okay. Okay. When you go up and to then, 100, and then we would have to be oil immersion or not? Okay. Yes, the hundreds oil immersion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's how that works. Uh, you don't want to get oil on the 40 or the 20, so try to be careful there. The hundred. Um, So, right. so it has a retractable uh, front element on it. Um, there's not an iris on that one. So uh, that's what you have here. And that, that kind of covers the scope. I mean, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So you've got bright field. You could do polarized light and DIC. Okay? So now we'll... How, how you can do polarized light? Well, it's going to be polarizer. If you do polarized light, you go to the BF position, and then and then pull out the this as well. But in this case, the the polarizer and analyzer are always crossed to each other. You can loosen the set screw and go off of square, but you want to make sure you get back to square to cross polars for DIC because it won't look right with us. Because I I can if I loosen this, I can now rotate this and we'll, we'll be come out of it being exactly, you know, square for DIC, all right? So now you say, okay, now you've moved it. How do you get it back to where you want it to? Well, you can, you know, visually, you can just look at it, get it to where it's at its darkest. If you really want to see, if, you're, if you go up to a 40X objective and you pull an eyepiece out, if you look down into the tube, when it's perfectly crossed, you get this sort of multi Cross hmm. when the polarizer and analyzer are across to each other. Can you see that? Yeah. 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. You see where it goes dark there in that hole? Hmm. Can you see in there? It's like a cross. It's like oh, a yeah. cross. Okay. So when you see that, you're not seeing it there, but with, in the eyepiece. When you see that, you know you're exactly crossed to each other. Then there's a little set screw here, and you tighten that down. And now we're back. You see the back of a lights to see the light up in polar. I was like, yeah, uh, why that? Why did that happen? <laughs> <As they say laughs> There's a whole literature on that. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay. 
seen that yeah. Yeah. No, and this is optically yeah. all right so now so now we'll start talking a little more about the software we um, we opened it up you've got when the software first opens uh, across the top you have sort of a process flow configuration you don't really need to go to unless you're you're making some sort of uh, change here but you know we're I had some problem like because when you try like you because you have to log in with a different account and then for each login the configuration changes for the software I guess like because if you are I know that for example if I log in with for a like account, image setups or something or yeah like the configuration of the program they will save and uh, I had some pro problems with that uh, like uh, when I was trying to have images from the microscope the screen was just like red blue yellow light like flashes of yeah lights. so that's that's just the demo camera so that means the camera didn't load so if you came in here and you clicked on on this yeah because if you click on every, this you, you were on simulator and then if you click on the, the camera oh, okay, yeah. and it says here it's load it should load that as default but if I mean, is there a chance yeah. you opened it without the camera being connected no, I like the first time that I, I logged in in the system, like using my account, the configuration was not the default, it was the only one. Mm. Like it. I'm not sure why, but... Um, yeah, you can try to make a... Well, we don't know who used it last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, okay. and then I, I, I had to call like a Tom Duda and he came mm -hmm. and helped me. Mm -hmm. and then we, you figured but it I out. Didn't, yeah, I didn't know that's the problem. Just, just this option. Right, mm. right. Okay. Um, there's not too much here you really need to um, to change so that's the configuration panel acquires where we're going to do all our acquisition you can adjust you noticed here I can adjust these if you want your image window to be bigger you can sort of slide these over um, another thing you could do is if you wanted to get a second monitor if it were the exact same size and resolution then the image would go over to the second one and then you just have this other stuff on one. But, I mean, this is fine. You can make adjustments. You also have a little magnifier here that if I can make the text smaller or larger, depends how good your eyes are, right? <laughs> um, so you have that. Um, and then, so in the Acquire tab, there's two sub-tabs here. This one... Uh, Explorer is just your, like, your Windows Explorer as far as saving images. Right now, you see that this little uh, folder icon is highlighted. That means you see there's a red dot here. So whatever is that, pictures. Looks like it's set to just automatically save into pictures. If you come down here and go to Acquire Format, right now it's doing it as a TIFF. You can do JPEG, bitmap, what have you. If you want a user-defined name, you can come down here and click on user-defined name and put a user-defined name in. So if you were capturing 30 images of this and you didn't want to name it every time, it would be good to do it this way, right? You assign it to a folder, you give it the name the first time, and then as you go, it just goes 01, 02, 03, what have you. Um, if you don't like that, if you want just your regular, if you're just saving uh, images and you want to save them with regular Windows Save As, if we just turn this off uh, wait, let's get back up from here if we just deselect that preview pictures if we turn that off now when I grab so that's this is not highlighted now when I grab an image uh, yeah so this looks like uh, this is just pulling what was up there from I uh, think if I go down to preview we're back yeah. back to where we were so if I now if I now go to grab an image um, if I, I I'll, I'll explain this but let me just grab an image first so now it'll ask for the magnification that's important for scale bars and things like that right so you do want to tell it the magnification say okay um, now we'll get our we should get our regular window save as right so now you can save it wherever you want. So if it were in pictures, we just do uh, whatever. Test DIC. 
DIC, now it's saved. So then if you come down here, you see test DIC is down here. Okay? And these were whatever looks like whatever those were. Okay? Um, so that's how the Explorer uh, part of it works. And if we go back to the Acquisition tab, this first part are your uh, controls for the camera. There's a standard and an advanced. Again, the first um, icon, and if you see if you hover the mouse over it, it'll tell you what's there. This is auto exposure. So if I click on that, it'll go to auto exposure. Um, let's go back to a live image here. So we've got our live image now. Um, when you're in auto exposure, this says brightness. So if even in auto exposure, you say, you know what, I like it to be a little darker, a little lighter, you can then adjust it and it'll make that adjustment. If you want to be out of auto exposure, if I turn that off, then you see this switches from brightness to exposure time. Mm -hmm. So then you can physically do an exposure. Um, for what you're doing, probably being in auto exposure is fine. The one thing I will say is when you're doing stacks, turn it off of auto exposure. Because if the lighting changes, mm -hmm. you don't want backgrounds and things mm -hmm. changing between the stack. You want to establish your exposure time at the beginning and then run through it grab it. But just for single image acquisition, this is fine. Um, we talked about different ways to white balance, right? You can click on the box, drag open a box in the background. Again, I can do that if I click here, drag open a box in area I know is supposed to be background, let go, and say white, click on white balance, and it'll, it'll white balance it. It takes a few seconds. There you go. Well, we've already done it, so it didn't do a, a lot. <laughs> If you wanted to physically play around with the color, you could play with this color wheel. That's when this is engaged, if I, if, right? If you wanted to make that. And again, with that, there is a white balance here, which white balances off the whole image, not just a region, okay? Um, other things here, this is a show histogram. It just shows you where your histogram is. Um, I wouldn't really play too much with these settings. This here, if you want more or less contrast, um, if you feel there's too much contrast in your s specimen, um, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 is probably the, the, the actual, you know, I, uh, default type setting in that range. That would probably more close, excuse me, more mm -hmm. closely match what's here, okay? If you, um, also I noticed this is inverted, um, where when we look through here, this part is mm -hmm. up. So if we want to change that, I can go to configuration and here's horizontal and vertical flip. So we'll do a vertical flip. Is that right? Let's see if I did that right. Uh, actually we need to do both need to do need to do both. So let's go back here and also click on horizontal. So if you want it to match what you see visually. Now, it, now that matches yeah. that, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. It's up to you whether you want to do that or not, but that's how you do it, okay? Um, again, this is contrast here. Um, these, I wouldn't mess so much with the show hide preview. That'll take pictures at a lot of different settings, or I guess if you're struggling trying to get an image, if you click on that, it'll take 12 or 16 mm. images at different settings and then if you like one in particular, you click on it, and then it'll load those settings, okay? Mm -hmm. um, this here, show hide shading correction, you're not really stitching stuff together, so you don't really have to worry about background correction. But if, if for whatever reason you felt you wanted to do a background, you, if you click on this, um, there's... Well, we actually, you may want to stitch it because we, we do it often. Okay. Um, well, how, where would you stitch it? Well, stitch it, it, by stitching you mean combining different Combining images, yeah? multiple images? Yes, because like for example, you take, this is just a part of, of the mite, so mm -hmm. you'll yep. take another part here, here, and then you'll Oh, so to get a really right. close yeah. up of... Right, no, I understand, I understand what, what you want to do. It's, 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 that function is not here in the... It's in, not going to work. ...in the core software. They, so they do make a, a live, so, again, diff the different ways of doing that are 
one um, getting a motorized stage and then you set okay this is the top right this is the bottom left and it goes through stitches you know of course that gets more expensive um, in the same way we have the live this is different from that stucker right yes yeah okay. yeah the because uh, this is doing an xy but we do have a live image builder xy as well i can show you that that'll kind of try and build it on the fly um, we can show you that um, otherwise what you would have to do is grab images and make sure you have overlap any side and maybe if you use like Photoshop or something mm -hmm. like that but um, if you want to see how your background so um, so if you wanted to do a background correction so if I click on the show hide shading um, and here's activate shading contracts so I I'd click on this and then I need to go to wizard and it says here press uh, press uh, the button store to uh, save and then uh, well X Y and folk well we have a manual scope so we wouldn't have that so uh, you move to an area of background and then and then you bring your you bring yourself a little out of focus and then if we go here what you do like here if you want to do it just for one objective we're on the 40 right now if I say single reference it'll then go through and look at that background so this is a single reference in DIC at 40x okay so now there's a little green dot here so now that one is done you could go through with each objective and do it okay as needed um, but let's say that's good for now if I close now if I click on this and say activate <coughs> now you see that that box turned green and there's a green box here that means now that background correction is done so now if I go back to where's our specimen can this introduce any artifacts What was that? Can yes, it what? Uh, what about artifacts? Background, background correction can it introduce artifacts. Well, it should. It should help. Uh, get rid of it. Okay, so now if you stitch these together, then the background should be, uh, you know, you shouldn't get as much of the sort of quilt-like yeah. mm. uh, look, right? The background should be nice and straight. And then if you're done, then just turn this off. Just click on this and then turn it off. Okay. So where are the images going into, I mean, have you? That's up here. You go into Explorer. And then you, but we've we've turned this off. So when you click acquire, grab an image. It'll go wherever you tell it. And then later you put in your pen drive or whatever to, to transfer them over to your own device, or if you want, yeah. Or I imagine if you put your memory stick in before you start, you can just direct it to save directly to your memory stick. Yeah, Probably. although if you do or that, not. and then you try to go to it when it's not plugged in. It might be better to, to grab, save them on the computer and okay. then transfer. Because then transfer. Okay. you can, like any of these, if I right click on this, like if this is the image I'm, I've grabbed, I can right click and I can say export as whatever, TIFF, JPEG, okay. and then you can sort of properly export it out of the program. Okay. Um, so this function here, like a, it, Correct. This like this area here is brighter than this one, so that that's the function. That's the yeah. green. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, so okay. if I turn, if we go back, if I turn that back it's on, to correct the sides, like there is one side brighter than the other one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see the difference now. No, right here. Okay. Right here. Yep. Now.
keep in mind that's for all the settings. Like if I turn this knob now, then I've changed the prism, and that may not be exactly the same. So if you're doing something for stitching, you want to get everything the way you want it, especially in DIC, and then create a new reference, and then start. Okay, if you know you're going to stitch them together. All right. Um, I mean, I can leave this on for now, but um, every time you use a new set again, to to left. correct again for every, every right. time you go to if, if you haven't, because with DIC, when when you change the the prism, it can change a little bit of the shading. Our shading is much less than some of our competitors, but there's still a little bit of you, you know you noticed a little darker on one side than the other, and you know this was set for the image the way the background the way it is right mm -hmm. now. So if you change a variable, you need to, you need to change because otherwise if you know it might make it might end up making this side brighter than that side because you have you know, of a of a different set. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, what else? Objective magnification here. You don't really need to worry about this quite as much cuz when you click acquire um, it's going to bring that window up and say what's the magnification. Um, if we want to go look at an image that we've acquired, like again this one, there's you see here three different ways of capturing image. It, it says start, capture image, or single image. And uh, you just have a single channel capture, so really you could use any of those. But if you had uh, the ability to do Z stacking, you had motor focus or something, or you had multiple channels here, um, if you click single image, it's just whatever channels up there. Capture image would do whatever, it would capture whatever channels are, but it would ignore Z or T, which is uh, focus or time. And then start would take into account all of them. Okay. So for what you're doing, you can either, you can click on any of these really, but if you're just doing single image, then just grab single image. So again, if this looks good, um, then I can click uh, single image. We're at 40x, so I'll just leave that, say OK. Again, we should get our window save as. We'll do a test DIC. SDIC2, enter, and now we've got that saved. So if I go to Explorer, I was in uh, picture, so here's, you know, there again was that series, that's the first one I took, and here's the other one where we made the adjustments, right? Okay. Um, up here, if you want to put a scale bar on, if I click over here, um, I can put a, a scale bar in there. If you want it to be a certain distance, a, a fixed distance, if I go back, click on the arrow, and then come down here and right click on that and go to properties, I can feed in a specific distance, right? Okay, so now it's there. I can move it around. What if you want it in black? Can you do that, or it's always black? Uh, I think that was in in the properties color mm -hmm. and font. Put it whatever color you want. Change the font. Okay. So will it um, rasterize this uh, scale bar? Will it incorporate it? Like all those uh, scale bar pixels will be like part of the picture, or it will be like a separate. Yeah, color. right now, it, right now it's a separate layer. Um, yeah. If I export it, so if I now, if I click on test DIC two and I export, let's say as a, as a JPEG, it'll ask, do you want, uh, do I want to? Well, actually, in this one, even if you didn't add it here, you could say add micron scale. Hmm. Um, Overlay channels, timestamp, dimensional data. Yeah, because I think if I say this, it might add another one. Mm -hmm. But if I leave the everything on here, this puts it in. This is going to put it in documents. Let's see what happens. So we'll put it. That will put it in documents.
it's on well it's on there you might have to increase oh, your yeah. font mm -hmm. okay all right so that's thank you for going to slip out thank okay you. you're welcome uh all right what else um you can zoom and pan here if you want to zoom up on your image and then pan around i can move around and go back to fit to window mode here um, if you want to see more of your gallery below you can do that um, the gallery then you've got that back under process there's um, some process tools cropping resize um, the, the merging and stuff I think is more like if you have, we were doing fluorescence and you had a green and a red and you wanted to merge them it's, it's actually more of an overlay than a merge so I, I don't think we can do can't really do like a stitching or anything here. Some of the things require mod modules, like deconvolution. If I click on, uh, well, it won't even let me get there. Okay, some of them it'll say it'll, uh, license key required or mm -hmm. something like that. But you can play sharpness, filters, different things. So you can do all of that. Uh, there is a little bit of quantification capability. You can't really, colocalization requires a module, but you could do intensity. If for whatever reason you wanted to measure intensity across an area, hmm. cool. and if I can right click and say normalize, it'll, so that's your three channels, red, green, and blue. I don't know if you ever have a need for that, but that's Never that. Did. Yeah. If you want to get rid of stuff that's on here, you can either go to here and select it, and then click the trash can or you can do if you want to get rid of it all then click all and then do trash can and then it'll get rid of them all select their key right and analysis you require a key for you don't even need that so actually what we could do if we go to configuration uh, customize user layout I can just get hide the analysis tab mm -hmm. Is that is this for like do you measure image like uh, threshold based image analysis where you set a threshold based on a certain gray level or something like that so you, you won't have that. Okay, but that's in a nutshell. So now let me close it out. I'll show you live image builder. Oh, but uh, how can I do like measurements in the image? Like a uh, yeah, we can show you that. The other thing is right now the setting for the camera I noticed it was it's on full resolution which is about a five megapixel camera <clears throat> so sometimes people will have the live image be a little bit lower resolution so you get faster refresh rate mm -hmm. so you can set the live to be a little bit lower than the grabbed image if you if you feel like the refresh rate is slow I mean it seems like it's still pretty good here but uh, if you look here we're at 4.9 megapixel for live and grab. So if I go to live image here, if we move around, you know, you can see there's a little bit of lag there, right? When you're in DIC especially. If I move, make this the 1.2 megapixel, it'll be a little lower res on the live side, but now look how fast the refresh mm, is. Yeah. Right? The average this, 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 the average size of the capture image. Yeah, well the capture image is still going to grab at the highest. Oh. When you do although when you, when you do live image building, it is going to build it based on the live image setting because you're it's live. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, so you can decide whether you want to have it on r real high or 
or not. So like as in this case, um, yeah, we, so you look here, right? We've got, we've got a lot of different areas here, right, of focus. Up here, and as I go down through, all the way down to here, right, until it gets out of focus. So, so this will be good for a live image build, all right? So if we, um, uh, let's look, where's our? We might have to change, actually, we might have to change to the easy operation mode for that. Is there a live image building on here? Some analysis, live stream, recording. Scope setting. Yeah, I think we might, <coughs> excuse me. So there's, if we go to configuration, there is what's called the easy operation mode. So if we click on this, it'll it'll change to a little more of a uh, icon-based setup. Mm. Okay, so you, you have pretty much the same thing. There's Explorer, there's your camera controls. Okay, but here's where you would have your live image builder. So I think you would need to be in this, let's get this in the fit to window mode here. Um, so I think when you're doing live image builder, you're going to have to be in this easy operation mode. Now, if you like it this way, you know, just leave it. You can just stay in this mode. Um, so if I go to the live image builder Z here, so if we look at this, oh, let me get a live image here. All right. So if I, let's say I'm, I'm up at top of my focus, maybe up in this range. So if I come over here, if I, I you need to click and hold this down until it, you get the check mark. And then in this case, you just have the Z. And then now you see the little capture button. Instead of just being a, a, the, the camera, there's also a Z here. So if I click on this, another window is going to open up. Well, first it wants us to have the save lo location. and then now you see this window comes up. So this is, this is the live image, this is the resultant image. So now basically all I'm going to do is slowly move down through here as I'm focusing through and then I, it'll build the image as we're going. So when I get all the way through where I'm not in focus anymore So now under live Z, there's the multifocus image. So you have to find the, the folder that you were in and then take a look at it. Okay, let's say for the, uh, the original files. Well, like that's, that's one there. And that's all the, all the focus parts put together. So it doesn't save individual no, layers save for this one. It's no, it combining it as it goes. The other program would. If you had the motorized focus, mm -hmm. it would step through and you would have your individual plus this. This mm -hmm. just makes one composite. Now, if you really wanted to have the motorized one on this, you could add a motor to the uh, focus and then do that. Be a little involved, but it can be done. Actually, it'd be. You'd need that, plus there'd be a card you'd need to put in here. <laughs> well, that would still be cheaper, I presume, than getting a whole new microscope. Yes, it would. <laughs> that, would that would be a lot cheaper than doing that. Okay, so that's that's where you have that there. If I go back to my preview. Oh. Can you do again, like I think I missed how to do it? Yeah, like the image focus image. Like I just okay. press the Z button and then... Right, so we'll start from the very beginning. Okay, very first thing you need to do 
is if you're not in this easy operation mode, you need to you need to go to configuration and say activate easy operation mode. Okay. Okay. Because you want it to look like this, where you have mostly screen and your icons. Okay. And then if you have the dongle in and it has the Z builder, you'll see that icon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to left click and hold this down yeah. until activated. it activates. You won't have these in here. You'll just have the one. The Z. Just the Z. Okay. And you see down here it says Z. Yeah. So typically what I would do is I'd go to sort of the high end where I'm, let's say, just barely out of focus. Um, let's say there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this. Browse one time. Like if we'll just do a uh, live. A name for the file? Right. Live Z2, we'll call okay. it. Okay. Okay. So save. So then this window opens up. And if this window's way too small, just drag it by the corner mm -hmm. and make it a little bigger. Okay. And then I'm just looking at this. You see I'm at six frames a second, so I don't want to go crazy fast. But now what I want to do is just slowly focus through. I'm looking at this. Oh, okay. And just see that I'm going to slowly focus through my image until I'm through the focal plane. So oh, now I'm not in focus anymore. Oh, so right. So oh. now I I'm going to stop it. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Because and then now I'm going to go back and find where it is. Mm. Here's Live Z2, and I come here and click on multifocus. Well, oh, I didn't quite go high enough, so I didn't, because I didn't uh, get that uh, one part. Like I already used a different microscope that you had to, to, to click the Z function every time to acquire an, an image, and then it like joined them okay. together. Okay, well, it's a different way That's of different, doing yeah. it. So this you just need to, really nice. to move here the focus, right. and it will be automatically. Right. That's nice. Let's try it one more time. Oh, that one didn't quite get everything, it seems. Oh, at least like, like we can't have a Z function. But it, it, you cannot edit it. Oh. oh, but this will take much faster photos, like without having to do all the extra stacking and stuff yeah. manually, because it just does it right away, and you can immediately see, you can immediately see if your photo's good yeah, or you need to retake least, it without going through a bunch of other steps. Right, so here I'm slowly, actually I'm going from the bottom up this time then. So now I'm through my focus here, so then I press stop, I stop it, let's go look here again, here's Live Z3, I renamed that one, that one should be better, so that's better. Because mm -hmm. I normally took less than a minute to right. <laughs> get all that together and see whether you need another image or not. Right. I think that's really nice. Okay, so that's how that works. Some other things. Um, in this mode, if, so now I'm going to get, if I, to get out of Live Z, I just click and hold it until that it turns off. So now I can come back here to Live Image. So I've got my Live Image here. If you want to, um, you know, let's say I'm just capturing a, a, a single image here, uh, capture it. Again, we're at 40x, okay. There's a way for us to go quickly, like just press without like every single time. click, would it be possible to do single click? To acquire the image. Capture image. To not have to do this? Uh, not well, like no, it first when you, when you say acquire image or capture, it will show it, it will show you this little menu, this 40x, 40x, can, can you yeah. like go faster? say, I don't want this menu. Yeah, but then you're, you won't know if your scale bars are going to be right. You want your measurements to be good? Yes. If, well, but I, if I do, there is a point is to do a series of pictures like Z, uh, you know. So um, he's he's asking if you know you're going to take a bunch of photos to yeah, stack together, do, but yeah, not using the automated photos, stack. If you can it turn it off temporarily, if you know you're going to okay. be using the same. Because just to be faster, like a right. So if I click on this, right. So I I click. Take a picture. Yeah, this is crucial. You're up. saying you don't want to confirm, yeah. confirm the settings. Um, it's uh, probably a safety feature that you can't turn off. Maybe. Show viewer. Oh, 
Here it is oh. right here. Confirm mm -hmm. magnification before image acquisition. Mm -hmm. So just deselect okay. that. If you turn that off, please remember to turn it back on in case well, it affects it. Well, but it will be a different right. account. You, each one. Every account. Yeah. Will that save if, a different if one? If you turn that off. Okay. So if you're in here, like, so this, all these windows, when I hover above them, they come out. If I click the little arrow here in the corner, it'll undock it. So you can have this out. So if you're not going to do it before, you could click it early on and then just leave it that way. Let's just leave that window uh -huh. open. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, so now if I grab this, I mean, it's still going to come up now. But okay, so whatever uh, image. Other things with this one, as far as uh, your scale bars and things like that, so if I, they're on this side, so if I click on this, the scale bar window comes up, I can close that one back out. So here you can do the properties where you want the scale bar, okay, um, and uh, colors and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Adaptive means it's going to put the right distance it thinks for the magnification. If you want to freely configure that, you can click freely config and put in a fixed uh, fixed setting. If I the other thing if I come here you see this first one where it shows uh, show hide. If I click on that, um, there's one, a little stamp here. So if I if I want to show this and then if I click the stamp and then you see there's a little stamper here. Now if I stamp this then it it stamped that into the image. It's there. Okay. Um, so if we go back and look, you'll see here there's test DIC and test DIC overlay. It automatically creates a new one with the stamp in it. Mm. Okay. Um, so if you want to stamp, if you want to stamp during acquisition, then you highlight this and then you see that the, the capture, instead of it just being a camera, it's a camera with a little blue stamp on it. So then it'll grab it. Right when you Every, every time you go to grab it, we'll have like the scale bar. it'll have if you want that on it, right? Okay. Other things, if you want to do measurements, if I come over here to uh, the measure tools, let's turn that one off. So here, if you want it, if yeah, I click yeah. on this, on is this. Way, this is way better. Although, uh, actually, so I should get out of. Right now, I have this has all the additional modules on it. So let's get out of this for a second. I'm going to get out of this. Uh, I won't worry about uh, Do you want any of these images saved? No, I don't. I mean, unless you guys do. Yes no, or no? No. 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 All right, just say apply to all. So I'm going to pull this out. Thank okay. you. We'll see you there. Um, without that in, so it'll be the just core. And I think it'll remember if you were in easy operation mode before, then it should come back to that. Mm -hmm. But I think like every login, they would have to do that. The default, the default, the, default. the classic interface, mm -hmm. yes. So let's say okay. The setting from before because I can see the stampers on there right now. I don't. Do you want it that way? Do you want a scale bar on everything or not? No, it's not my computer. Uh, who's login? I usually don't do it. You don't. All right, so we'll come in and turn that off then. So if I come here, go to show hide. I'm going to uncheck the stamper. Okay. So even now, if you, if we show the scale bar, like scale bar here, even if we show it. Right now, it's not stamped in, so you can grab an image; it won't it won't be stamped in there. If you want to do measuring, so if we come over here, um, 
go to annotation tools, then there's this distance line here, and here's where you can measure you know, from there to, to there. But it's just so this is this measure. is live image, right? Uh, actually, yeah, this is live image right now. Oh, that's great. So you don't need to take a picture to measure the image. Uh, no, I mean, if you want to take a picture and have those art burned in there, or you can grab the image and then do it on the grab. Oh, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's really and again, right now I'm still in this mode, so if you want to make a change, go back to the arrow, so you're back in your arrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like, what exactly are these options, different options? Just like a mm -hmm. distance mm -hmm. to all this. Is it, is it okay if I change the focus? Yeah, thank you. Sure. Did it change or not? Yeah.